Max ECU has now released the biggest and most exciting M2 revision to date with changes both tall and small. As we continue to grow as a top ECU and tuning platform provider, we value our customers' feedback of the highest order. In doing so, we have installed new features as well as updates of current features, including an M2 performance update reducing loading times by at least half, improved fuel calculation resolution and algorithms, new keyboard shortcuts. Now you can make your mapping simple, effective, and more efficient with table smoothing. A new live logger update, some examples, drag to zoom, scaling lines, and new save to log file from selection. Two new OEM CAN protocols, the Lotus Elise and Mazda RX-8, along with some small OEM CAN revisions. More shift cut options for your motorsport needs. Extra adjustment tables for closed loop boost control. Now add boost duty cycle based on any parameter to complement and refine your control. New power adder feature to be used with power management to help soften your launches and leave the competition in the dust at the starting line. Launch control start RPM can be adjusted in real time. Tire growth correction for speed calculations and drag racing to help you understand how your car moves down the track. Additional math channels for performing custom calculations according to your needs, new additional trigger systems, various bug fixes which have been brought to our attention by our community. We are going to cover some of the latest features in 1.122 software release. The first feature you're going to notice is how quickly the software opens. Let's open up a, a data log that will open up a map file for us as well. You also have the ability now to smooth. This is really nice to see in 3D. So you can see our map has some dips and peaks and valleys. You can right click and hit smooth or you can simply hit the S key and watch it change either way. So now there's no excuse for having an ugly map. We've also added a host of keyboard shortcuts. Those are visible here. Some of the newest ones are Control plus A to select all the cells, S for smoothing the selection, uh, P for pausing the live logger. Um, a lot of the, the new, all the new shortcuts are labeled here. Some of the new features in the live logger I will show you in the, the regular log viewer. I'm not live with an ECU, so you can see in the log when you highlight a line now, when you roll over a line, it shows you the grid lines. And the grid lines are broken up into the min and max values for that channel. So you can see the grid lines for the RPM are going from 0 to 14,000. And you can see that's the min and max of my RPM channel that I've selected. You can turn the grid lines on and off right here. You can also change your time reference so they've added a new source which which is the log sample index and basically that's going to change the number that's displayed down here on the axis this is the log sample is the default channel you can also shift left click and drag to highlight a section of the graph now and then when you roll over one of the lines, it will show you the min, max, and average of that channel. This feature's been there for a while. And then you can right click and then clear that selection. You also have some new saving options. You can save the log file as something different, or you can save it as a CSV now, so you can export the data, or you can export it as the the original max ECU dash log file and that that will not contain the map file and this will not the CSV will not contain the map file sorry one more option is the ability to zoom with the timer bar so not only can you scroll left and right but you can use the the bar itself to zoom in and extend or shrink the graph the way you like it Last feature I'll go over real quick. It's, it's a pretty in-depth feature, but we'll go over it quickly. Scatter plots. So this gives you the ability to look at variables and how they affect each other, three variables. So what we'll do, the first thing I want to do, show you how to use is the select and log tool. So you click on it and you simply click, click on three variables in the data log. So we selected Lambda, Analog, fuel pressure and manifold pressure. And this is the scatter plot showing how those three items relate to each other. 
There's also a lot of other, you right click inside the graph and there's a lot of options to, to go over here, but we'll cover that in another detailed video. We have also added the ability to create a PWM input frequency plus a duty. So basically, if you have something that generates a frequency from another device, it can be a, a, an electronic wheel speed sensor or anything that outputs a, a square wave at a certain frequency, you can now input that into the ECU for measuring, measuring and use on an axis on a table. Uh, when doing that, you would just assign an input, a digital input to uh, PWM frequency input and duty, and then you will get two new real-time values, input duty and input frequency, and you can use these as axis on tables. We've added more shift cut options. So now you can turn on the ability to adjust the drop percentage with a table. Normally, fuel and ignition were cut 100% during a shift cut event. Now you can tune that so that in this case, we're cutting no more than 50% of fuel and no more than 75% of ignition. This ability allows you to really dial in your shift kill times and smooth out uh, how violent the shift event can be. Cutting 100% can be very violent uh, and it can hurt drivetrain and other things. We've also added uh, extra adjustments uh, in power management that allow you to change a feature called power adder. So power adder is the ability to add power to raise the wheel speed line up to your target line. Normally power management has always been used to take power away in case the wheel speed ever got above our target. Now you can use your, your boost controller, uh, your nitrous and ignition timing to add power to get the wheel speed up to the target line. We've added the ability to do launch control based upon instantaneous settings or settings that are right now. So basically what does that mean? That means that normally we're at a fixed RPM. So we pull in our clutch or we hit a button and then we you know, go to 100% throttle and the engine stays at whatever our launch RPM is. Now you have the ability to lock the RPM anywhere. What that means is, is you don't touch your button, don't touch your launch activation button, and you, you, give, you open up your throttle until you reach the RPM you want to launch at. Then you hit the digital input, and then you floor it, and it's going to lock the RPMs there for you. That's a nice feature to have. So that's like a variable launch control RPM all the time. Tire growth, um, that's, a, that's a very nice new feature. So basically what this does is, is it, it allows you to, in drag racing, the tire grows. So as you go down the racetrack, the tire gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It, it expands due to centrifugal force. So that calculation is not linear. And this allows you to add a correction factor at a certain speed to help accommodate that. So in the, we have some advanced math channels in the software now. And this is version one. So basically what I've done here is I've created a channel called charge temperature. It's going to be in degrees Fahrenheit and it's A plus B. Uh, and then here's all your math options. So term A is a variable intake temperature. Term B is a variable coolant temperature. So we're just going to add those two together and call it charge temperature. You can also make this a constant. So this can be, you know, you can, now it's going to be coolant temp plus 1.1. And then you can use that as an axis on your table if you wish. You can right click, change axis, and just type in the new name you've created, charge. And it will populate the window with the channel you have and there's your options. Now you can put charge temperature on that axis. We've also added a bunch of new trigger systems. I won't go into those in depth. If you have any questions, please contact your dealer. Um, those are listed here. Mazda RX-8 is one of the new ones. There's a lot of Lotus, new Lotus triggers. Um, there's the cam encoder patterns as well. You can now use the map sensor as a cam sensor. 
this is an advanced feature that uh, some motorcycles use, some cars use um, to sense when there is a certain amount of vacuum in the number one throttle body. It, it can use that as a cam signal. Pretty neat feature. We would like to thank all of our users at Max ECU. Your continued support and feedback help to make our ECUs continually perform at the top of the competition.